What's up guys, it's me Jeremy, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to control Dragon properly. Being able to control Dragon can give your team some major early leads without actually having to kill any opponents. You can use this lead to snowball and control a game, since it helps out every single player on your team. Especially in solo queue, most people are fairly poor at taking dragons, so if you can control it successfully, it can be a huge benefit to your play. Now, there are two parts of successfully controlling Dragon. The first would be controlling it when your opponent doesn't contest it, while the second would be controlling it while your opponent does contest it. The first part is, of course, obviously more simple, but still equally as important. Putting yourself in a situation where your opponent does not contest it can make your dragons completely risk-free, which is awesome. And this part all comes down to two things, ward control and timing. In general, for full ward control of dragon, you want at least two pink wards, one for the dragon area and one for the most likely entrance of your opponent. Be sure to ward clear using these pink wards or an oracles if you do have it, a little bit before you do the dragon, because if you clear it right as you do the dragon, it's obvious you are doing it and then your opponent can respond. Make sure for the pink ward that you put in the dragon area, you put right on the edge of the pit. That way it will show both wards outside of the pit and the wards inside of the dragon pit. In addition to controlling the area with wards, be sure to keep track of the timer for dragon. It respawns exactly 6 minutes after its death, and if your team can be right there as it spawns, it can be very easy to take free dragons. Now onto the second part, which is controlling it if your opponent is contesting it. Now, there are also two major parts to this. Position control and fight mechanics. Let's start with position control. This is fairly similar to ward control, but is more focused on where your team is rather than where your wards are but wards are what help you gain and maintain your position control. There are quite a few key things to notice about position control around Dragon. First is that since it's a very large and open area, there was a lot of room to position. And second, due to the nature of the Dragon Pit and the arc behind it, flanking is very easy. Dragon also has loads of entrances too. In general, you just want to make sure that you aren't getting flanked and you aren't in a position to be initiated on while pressuring with your position to gain the position advantage onto your opponents. Usually the team near the pit has the advantage since they are the ones that can pressure the dragon to be able to force a fight. Also, they can use the corner that the pit has to deny vision with a corner bait. In addition, make sure that you have vision of the bushes you're fighting in so that you don't get juked or kited into them to maintain your position. Once you have established position by pressuring as a team, you need to understand the fight mechanics. When it comes to dragon, some fight mechanics are vastly superior to others. For example, teleport abilities are amazing, as it allows you to set up 4v5s which are very easily winnable. But in addition, you have AoE abilities that can dominate teams. Since you'll usually be a little bit lower level during dragon fights, area of effect abilities, and in particular, area of effect crowd control abilities, simply just dominate dragon fights. Things like Rumble's Equalizer or Sona's Crescendo, just to name a few, are amazing in dragon fights. In addition, since there are so many bushes and so much space, kiting is a phenomenal mechanic in dragon fights, since it's just so practical in that situation. Because of this, initiations are also a very powerful tactic. It's crucial that your team starts the fight, as this will help remove or even eliminate kiting potential for your opponents, while giving your team amazing kiting potential for yourselves for an easy win in that fight. Just make sure that your team can follow up on your initiations. Now, there are actually a couple of wild cards that can have a major effect on dragon fights as well that you want to watch out for. The first would be the bushes. Fights can be won or lost based on how those bushes are used, as a solid player can use them to kite very effectively, since they'll be untargetable when juking through the bushes, of course. Be sure to use them to your advantage. Another wild card would be the dragon pit and dragon itself. While forcing poor positioning from your opponents can be good, attacking dragon can often deal a decent amount of damage and should be avoided if a fight is inevitable. Also, getting caught in the pit will eliminate pretty much all kiting potential unless you have a way to get over the wall. So either watch out for that or try to trap your opponents in the pit as it leads to very easy pickings. My name is Jeremy and that is it for my video on controlling dragon. I'd love if you could support me with a like or join me on my North American chat room gaming curios, which I am always in when I go online. Please subscribe for more awesome content in the future if you enjoy this video, and I'd love if you could follow me on Facebook or Twitter, of which I will have links in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.